people who attended their high school reunion. What was the biggest surprise? Story 1. Back in high school, there was one girl who was extremely popular, extremely pretty, and seemed totally unapproachable from my vantage point. She was also really catty, embodying a lot of the mean girl stereotypes. Talking with her at the reunion, it turned out that she was very insecure and had a very tenuous home life for which she was compensating. Now she is extremely kind, full of gratitude, and just really down to earth. I love seeing that sort of change in people. Story 2. The last I ever heard of my high school reunion was in an alumni newsletter. I was listed as missing with a request for anyone who knew how to contact me to contact the alumni organization. The newsletter was sent to my house. I'm not trying to take it personally. There was a guy that lived down the street from me with the same first and last name and only like a year off in age. He killed himself my freshman year of college. Most people I went to high school with thought it was me and I constantly surprised people by continuing to be alive. Story 3. The reunion itself. My wife was down in the state south of us for training and got into an accident. I went down and got things sorted with her, so she was good and went back to what she was doing, and I drove back north. It was a Friday and I was driving through my hometown and I figured I would take my mother out to a restaurant we used to both really like going to. As we were eating, an old friend from high school walked through, waved and headed into the back, then another, and another, and another. Just as I was about to get up and go see what was going on, an old girlfriend and later good friend walked in saw me, and came up to talk for a bit. Then she asked if we should head back there, which confused me. Turns out, I made it to the 10th year reunion for my class without knowing that I was at the 10th year reunion for my class. I finished my dinner with my mom, let her take my car home, I would catch a ride, and had a good night at the reunion I didn't know to expect. Story 4. It was disturbing that 17 classmates had died by our 10th reunion. We had a lot of kids die within the first five years after graduation, can't remember the exact number, but it was in the neighborhood of like 20. Don't remember all of them, it was a weird mix of stuff. Three died in the same car crash, two were suicides, five to ten were OD-related deaths, at least one murder. We were a class of 650. Still, it felt weird that there were that many deaths. We went to a pretty decent school, in a nice area. Story 5. That my friend was still alive, and he was equally surprised that I was. We got into drugs together right after high school. We ended up being so fucked up that one night we robbed each other. He sold me a bag of actual grass, and I gave him a dollar instead of a 20. And we both ran in opposite directions and never spoke again. Friendship ended. No one even confronted the other. Ten years later at my high school reunion, I saw him sitting in the corner. We were both sober and looking great. I walk over to him, and the first thing he says to me was, Oh my god, I thought you'd be dead! And I said the same thing back to him. We talked the rest of the night. He didn't even remember why we stopped talking in the first place. Just that we were both in a very dark place when we parted ways, lol. Anyway, we both felt it best we leave the friendship there and did not exchange numbers or anything. But I'm glad he's alive. Story 6. A guy had cancer and attended. He looked to be 80 years old, but was in his late 20s. Cancer really took a toll on him. Sad. On the positive side, there was a kid in my school when I was in elementary that had gotten cancer. I moved away, and the next time I saw him, he was in the NHL. Story 7. The only real surprise was just how wrong we were about how people would turn out. The Ivy League-bound people you were sure would be CEOs one day ended up dropping out of college, having normal middle-class lives, jobs, and marriages, and just being happy as average. The people you were sure would end up like Wooderson from school days turned out to get master's degrees and even PhDs in one case, and now work in either government or aerospace. The guy who fought to get into West Point ended up doing his required four years and then leaving the armed services. One guy ended up becoming a semi-successful author, and nobody saw that coming. Two committed suicide, and many asked, why? He seemed to have everything going for him. The girl who got pregnant at 16, who you were sure was destined for a life of struggle, ended up landing a great career and retiring early and her kids turned out to be great people who any parent would be proud of. The people you were sure would never lose contact with their friend group vanished as if they had never existed. The people who had to ask yourself, I don't recall that name at all, did they graduate in my class? Are now friends with 75% of the class on Facebook, and active. The athletes, boys and girls, are now anything but athletes, overweight and frumpy. The frumpy dumpy ones are now rock climbers and hike the entirety of the Appalachian Trail. It just goes to show, who you are on graduation day is absolutely not who you will become in 3, 5, 10, or 30 years. The future is yet unwritten, and the only thing stopping you from change is yourself. Story 8. That I couldn't remember anyone. 
everyone remembered me because I was the freak in high school, and people kept coming up to me and being like, Science for bed! It's so great to see you! And I kept having to run to the wall where they'd plastered blown up yearbook photos to figure out who the fuck anybody was. Story 9. At some point of our 10-year reunion, I asked the girl I had a crush on back in the 7th, 8th grade if she knew that I had a crush on her. I just thought it was fun talking about that as adults. Turns out she texted me several times the next day. We met again, and now, almost six years later, we're engaged. We have a house, a child, a second child on the way, and everything is great. Not what I expected back then. Story 10. How many people seemed like they wanted to get to know me better in high school? When I was in high school, I felt like a total social pariah, and I would only approach people I thought were also at the bottom of the social food chain. It turns out, a lot of pretty cool people would have likely been my friends if I had given them a chance, and been more open to it. Many people mentioned that they thought about being friends, or better friends with me, but weren't quite sure why it didn't happen. Also, at the reunion, I was much more extroverted and confident, and I realized a lot of the people I thought were popular snobs were very cool people. Back in high school, it's not like those folks were begging me to hang out and I said no, but I was definitely defensive because I didn't want to get rejected. This means that I might have missed out on having not only more friends, but better ones, because picking from the lowest rung of the ladder often meant I was dealing with people who had a lot of emotional problems. Story 11. At the 10 year, one guy who had been kind of a nerd and on the bowling team was now part of a wacky morning DJ crew on one of the more popular radio stations in New York City, and came in with big hair and dressed like a rock star. Story 12. The people who made fun of me for my weight were now fat, divorced, and barely making it. I lost weight in college, got married to a wonderful man, and have great kids. And in the end, they thought they were still better than me. I guess I found irony. Story 13. Last year was our 10th year reunion. I went there just for shits and giggles, and wow, where do I even begin? The biggest nerd in the whole year turned out into this huge egotistical douchebag. The school's most sociable girl became a nurse. The school gang of bad boys were two dead, one car crash, one drug overdose, one committed suicide, one worked in a tech store, one worked two jobs because he was paid child support to three women. Remember kids, condoms are a good thing. One actually turned his life around and got a bachelor's degree in English and was a middle school English teacher. And the last one was working for his dad because he got kicked out of uni. My classmate, who many people thought was an asocial and stuck up bitch, bloomed into a beautiful woman who's married with two kids. We had a long talk and she said that she appeared asocial because our classmates were morons, true and she had no intention to talk to them. Story 14. My wife and I hosted our 10 year in 2014. We arranged everything via Facebook, figuring it was the easiest way to reach people. We left the group open so people could add people who had been married and weren't easily searchable due to changing their name. Well, this person added themselves and started making trouble about everything. They literally had a complaint about every aspect of what my wife and I were planning. The issue was nobody had ever heard of this person. We looked in our yearbook and they weren't in it. We were getting messages from dozens of people about their behavior in the group, and who the hell this person even was, so my wife asked. Apparently, they got kicked out of their high school final semester of their senior year, and came to our school for three months. When the reunion came around, they were the first to show up, sat quietly in a corner, and left early. I still have no idea who this person is. Story 15. Oh, I have a good story. When we were in school... One of the popular, attractive girls had her birthday party at the cinema and invited me. I wasn't really a loser, just not popular, so I was pretty stoked to be invited. I think the movie was rated for adults, and me and the short kid weren't allowed in. I think my game face mustn't have been good enough because I was average height for my age, and younger-looking, shorter guys had gotten in. Me and the short kid sat in a different movie and then went home. To make matters worse, I completely embarrassed myself by buying the girl chocolates and bringing them, wrapped, to the movies. I did this partially because I thought she was pretty, and partially because that's what I was brought up to do. Nobody else bought her a present. So not only did I look like an idiot giving her a present in front of everyone, I didn't even get into the movie. A few people asked where I was afterwards and I couldn't lie. Word got around. I was so embarrassed. Anyway, a few days after this girl's birthday, in PE class, she came up to talk to me and thanked me again, and said she was still enjoying the chocolates. I brushed her off because I was still super embarrassed, and part of me thought I would gain some coolness points if I pretended it was no big deal, or I didn't even remember, or some such thing. Anyway, just before the reunion, we did a tour of our old school grounds. When this girl, now very much a woman, saw me, she came up, heavily pregnant and still a smoke show, and gave me a huge, long hug. I don't think I spoke to her even during high school, let alone after. 
We didn't really talk much at the reunion. She gave birth a few days later. Since the reunion, I have wondered if she really was touched by my getting her a gift, and maybe something could have eventuated. Of course, she could have just been being polite. The weirdest part, though, was getting drunk with two guys I'd started school with and long since parted ways with. Story 16. My husband and I graduated from high school together. This year will be our 20th reunion. We attended our 10th reunion 10 years ago, and it reminded me why I hated high school so much to begin with, lol. First of all, the people in charge of planning it threw out the words professional networking opportunity a thousand times before the event. If by networking they meant everyone getting shit-faced and reverting back to 10-year-old high school drama, then they hit the nail on the head. I used to be on Facebook, and I would read these people's posts and think, wow, they have these perfect, amazing lives. The night of the reunion, after the liquor was flowing and people let their masks slip, I realized how phony their internet personas were and that some of them had serious problems going on in life. That whole time, I had been being completely authentic on my social media like a sucker. The next morning, I deleted my accounts and never went back. I learned a valuable lesson that we are all going through the ups and downs of life. I just would prefer not to be inundated with everyone else's all the time and would like to keep my own to myself. I recently got an email for the 20th with a questionnaire about where it should be held. I tried to make the case for one of our local casinos, because A, I like it there, B, my husband and I can book a hotel room and not worry about the drive home after, and most importantly, C, if I'm not feeling the vibe with my old classmates, I can go gamble or see a show or a number of other things. Story 17 I got a lot of apologies from bullies. In high school, I was kind of weird and insecure. Definitely didn't have any direction, purpose, or confidence. By the time I went to my five-year or six-year reunion, I forgot which, I'd run and held office, been covered in the major local newspaper, and was dating a really hot woman. I remember walking in and having all these guys who thought I was a dweeb and who bullied me, and they all basically said the same thing. Damn, man. You've grown. Story 18. At my 10-year reunion, one of the guys that bullied me for being gay had, himself, come out of the closet, and I learned how to embrace the BDSM lifestyle in all the good ways. We chatted, and he apologized for his behavior, and we got to talking about our mutual interests. Not that night, but down the road. He bullied me again. He bullied my brains out. It was surprisingly cathartic. Story 19. How little I fit in now. I went to a very religious school and was always a quiet kid who blended into the background but had a close group of friends, all of whom I lost touch with through uni and subsequent years. At the reunion, I'm there, very tattooed and now working in the film industry with lots of mad stories of my exploits, and all my old friends are much the same as they were at school. No one really blew up big or fallen apart, just quietly working away at things, mostly religious or charity work. I was very much the outlier at the reunion in terms of sheer change of life direction, which was odd. Story 20. In high school in the late 1970s, a punk bully took my backpack and threw it out of a third-story window. I hated that guy. He did random shitty things like that to a few others. At a recent reunion, he surprisingly showed up. I decided to talk to him. After a few beers, I brought up the backpack toss. He didn't remember it. We talked further. Turns out, during that time in high school, his dad was dying of cancer, and he was struggling with his sexuality. He's gay. Through tears, he apologized to me for his erratic behavior in high school. After a couple more beers, he told me that his 30-year partner had also recently passed away from cancer. Wow. I'm just glad I went to the reunion. I'd been talking shit about that guy for decades. Now we are great friends. Story 21. I tried to convince my best friend, a woman, to go to our 25th together. We've been friends since we were 16. Went to prom together, I was at her wedding, she was there for me when my wife died. We still have dinner or get beer once a month. We've been friends for almost 30 years now. Everyone in high school thought we'd end up together, so I wanted to go with her so when people would say things like, Oh, you're married now? We could both say, Yeah, but not to each other. Shh. She didn't want to see all those asshats, so we didn't go. It would have been funny, though. Story 22. I was probably a big surprise for a lot of people, and I met my husband. We knew of each other in high school, but had both changed so much we were basically new and different people ten years later. He'd been a huge stoner hippie, but popular cool party boy, and I'd been suppressed into near invisibility between an abusive boyfriend and conservative Christian parents. I had zero interest in going, and actually hadn't even graduated from there. But my old friends, one was bullied terribly and was now out and proud, the other had a near-lethal cough syrup addiction and barely graduated, but now had a mid-six-figure internship on Wall Street, really wanted me to go, because I was a late bloomer, and they wanted to show up with a newly pretty girl on their arm. Plus, I had really nice fake boobs. Their explanation is not mine. Pretty much the best decision I ever made. Met my husband, and he's so hot and super awesome, and we're still killing it 13 years later. Most unlikely couple ever. Story 23. How poorly most people aged. 
People were not taking care of themselves at all, and some of the girls I used to have crushes on looked as old as my mom. It's true what they say about people speaking. If you're reading this, make sure you get a gym membership and take care of your skin. Story 24. I heard a lot when I heard you died. My best friend, who still lives in our hometown, decided it would be funny to tell everyone he met over the years that I was dead, stabbed, having to do with stealing from the Yakuza. Since I don't do Facebook or anything, people just believe it. It was pretty funny. One girl I went to high school with cried when we met at the reunion, which was kind of nice. Another weird thing is the kid that hated me in school still held that hate ten years later. Tried to talk to him to see if he'd tell me now, but told me to leave him alone and did. Still have no idea why. Story 25. I was surprised at how little changed on my 15th. The clicks were still clicks. I recognized a few people, but it largely felt the same as it did in high school, but at a bar. After standing around not really talking to anyone, I noped out somewhat early and don't really have intentions to go to any more of those. I have plenty of friends today, but in high school I was sort of the cast out kid. I hated going to the commons as I typically sat around by myself bored out of my mind, so my time was largely spent in the library or down in the music room writing and practicing. In hindsight, I should have made a better effort then to meet people, but I was incredibly shy. That reunion just served as a reminder of how miserable my time was in high school. Story 26. So, I didn't go to my reunion. I came out of the closet at 14, and frankly, I keep up with the people I care about. One thing that is interesting, as I've run into quite a few people I didn't know in high school out and about the city I live in now, one thing that stood out is, apparently many of these people knew I was gay and never once talked to me or acknowledged me. But now that we're adults and they've come out, apparently we are as close as can be. Yeah, no. I didn't know you then, and our gay experiences are very different. Partially because they were the folks that ignored me. Shrug. Story 27. I was so surprised that most of the popular kids never made it out of my small southern town. Or, God only knows why, they moved back. I saw more and did more in 20 years than they will ever do. They were so glamorous and cool, but they ended up boring adults who were fine with a house, 2.3 kids, and a week at Panama City once a year. I was shocked. Story 28. There were several. The class clown now was the head of security for the high school we went to. One of the guys I used to play magic cards with is some bigwig at Google now and rich as fuck. The hottest girl in our class married a guy who had been a freshman when we were seniors and had five kids with him. We had all joked that she should marry him during school because he was so awkward around her every time he saw her. Well done, Otto. Almost everyone thought my wife was an escort I'd hired for the night because she was so hot. Also, because we dressed way up compared to most everyone else. Whoops. It didn't help that, five years later at our 15-year reunion, my wife decided not to go. I started telling people she was from Canada and went to a different school reunion. Story 29. I went to my 10-year reunion when it was held about 35 years ago. Not sure why I went, because I was never part of the in-crowd. One of the first people that comes up is a guy who is epitomized middle-aged while being only 28. A little rotund, comically bald, top of his head was as bare as a baby's ass, but he had blonde tufts of hair around his head. Very clownish looking. He started to talk to me, and I had no idea who he was. I finally asked him, and he told me his name. I almost laughed at him. You see, this guy was THE chick magnet at my high school, and had the attitude to match. In-shape surfer dude, charismatic, thick, wavy blonde hair, and always seemed to have cash. Karma was not kind to him. Story 30. There was a classmate of mine who claimed to have been in love with me ten years ago, unbeknownst to me, but thanked me for always being kind to him. He was a bit weird, but I wasn't mean to him, and he appreciated that. It was surprising, touching, and I was happy that he was doing well now. Added him on Facebook, got his number, told him to keep in touch. Twenty minutes later, he then proceeded to spend the rest of time trying to get my husband to fight him outside. We left, I blocked him, and took it as a sign to delete all social media. People get weird. Story 31. Obligatory not me, but my uncle. My family moved back and forth from Massachusetts and New Jersey a few times due to my grandfather's work, and my uncle was extremely popular in school. The summer before his senior year, the family had to move to Massachusetts for my grandfather's new job. My uncle completely forgot to tell anyone, including some of his friends, that he was moving. And the move happened quickly in the 80s. So, to the eyes of his classmates, the most popular guy in school just disappeared one summer without a trace. Fast forward to his high school reunion, he stayed up in Massachusetts after the move and got a letter in the mail. He was invited to his old high school reunion, which was something they did often to find out what happened with people who moved away. He was met with a ridiculous list of reasons people thought he disappeared, including getting a mob boss's daughter pregnant and needing to be put in witness protection. Story 32. Heh. <laughs> 
I went to my 30th reunion and chatted with this girl who I really had no idea who she was, but she was so enthusiastic and charming and lovely and she seemed to know who I was. Anyway, now I follow her on Facebook and Instagram, and she is living an awesome life. I looked at my old yearbooks, and we were in the clique adjacent. We had lots of friends in common, but never spent time together. The richest kid is still the richest kid, but even more unfathomably rich. Like, wow rich. One of our classmates actually became famous. Movies, TV shows, etc. Still super nice. I'm always so excited to see him in the news. Also a bit jealous of some of his past Hollywood girlfriends. A girl who I knew, but wasn't that close, was a fireman all these years and was just about to get her MD degree. Like, wow, new doctor at age 48-ish. So happy for her. The annoying classmates from elementary school were still very annoying. Grew up in a smallish town, so went from kindergarten through high school with lots of the same kids. Most people seemed to be doing fine. I guess otherwise they wouldn't have gone. Our 10th reunion was at a swanky downtown hotel with a sit-down meal, and our 30th was at a civic hall conference room in our suburban hometown with a taco truck for food. It was so delicious. 